A very good afternoon to you all, ladies and gentlemen. I deem it a privilege and honor to have been invited to participate in the second regional conference of Asian parliamentarians and human rights defenders on elimination of custodial torture and ill treatment in Asia. Jointly organized by the Asian Human Rights Commission, AHRC, and Dignity. I must thank the organizers of the conference in which parliamentarians and human rights defenders from several countries in Asia are participating. I'm very hopeful that the objectives of the conference shall be achieved through valuable and meaningful deliberations and discussions and contribution by the distinguished participants. Although Convention Against Torture has been ad adopted by the United Nations General Assembly on December 10, 1984, the Asian governments are yet to take firm action to eliminate torture and ill treatment. Widespread practice of torture and treat ill treatment prevails in most countries in Asia. Causes of such endemic practice in their respective countries were identified by the participants in the first conference held in July 2012. Article 5 of UDHR, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and Article 7 of ICCPR, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, enshrine the individual's rights against torture and other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. Therefore, the legal framework of all member countries should be based on the principle. The UN General Assembly recognizes these ideas and considers it the obligation of the member states to prohibit and eliminate any form of torture within the national legal order. Article 35 five of the Constitution of the People's Republic of Bangladesh fundamentally prohibits the practice of torture, cruel, inhuman, and degrading punishment and treatment. Convention Against Torture and Cruel, Inhuman, or Degrading Treatment on Punishment was signed in New York in December, on December 10, 1984. On 5th October, 1998, Bangladesh has acceded to the aforesaid Convention. Article 2.1 and Article 4 of the Convention requires the state party acceding to it to enact domestic legislation to establish an act of torture, cruelly inhuman, and degrading punishment on and, and ill treatment as a crime in the country. Therefore, it was imperative to make legislative provisions to give effect to Bangladesh's obligations under the aforesaid convention. I am very pleased to report to this August conference that Bangladesh has enacted the long-cherished law criminalizing torture on October 24, 2013, titled Torture and Custodian Death Prevention Act 2013. The Act number 50 of 2013 to give effect to the Convention Against Torture and other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. Asian Human Rights Commission, HRC, must be credited and appreciated for the initiatives to draft the bill and help with promotional work for internal and external advocacy for the legislation. Bangladesh Civil Society Organization, Odhikar, also deserves special recognition for their efforts in promoting this legislation. Now, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to share with you the salient features of Act Number 50 of 2013, the Act Criminalizing Torture.
the act is titled as Torture and Custodial Death Prohibition Act 2013. It shall be effective immediately. In the act, we have uh, many, many definitions with expiratory notes, but I'll touch a very few. Like law enforcement agencies means uniformed and disciplined forces like the police, rapid action battalion, border guards of Bangladesh, customs, immigration, criminal investigation department, CID, special branch, intelligence agencies, ANSA, BDP, Coast Guard, and any other state agencies engaged in enforcement and implementation of law in the country. And armed forces, all mean Army, Navy, and Air Force. Torture means any act of omission, any act or omission which causes pain, whether physical or mental, to any person, in addition to for the purposes of obtaining information or confession from the person or some other persons, punishing any person for any act or omission for which that person or some other person is responsible or is suspected of being responsible, intimidating or coercing any person or some other person or on the basis of discrimination, provocation, or consent or authority of any public officer or any government capacity. You see, and then, so this is the torture definition which is fairly widespread. And then custodial death has been, again, explained as follows means the death of a person in the custody of a public officer. Moreover, any death of any person during an illegal detention at the time of arrest by any law enforcing agent shall also imply as custodial death. Victim or agreed person has been defined as, person, means any person who alleges that an offense under this act has been committed. Any person who alleges that who an offense under this act has been committed upon her or him or upon a person she or he is concerned about. Privilege of the act, irrespective of the provisions in any other law in, in force in Bangladesh, the provision of this act shall prevail. And complaints of an offense under this act in court. In the Code of Criminal Procedure 1898, Act number five of 1898, if a person brought before a court having jurisdictional, having jurisdiction in this act, complains that she or he has been subjected to torture, the court shall, this is very important, record the statement of the person immediately, direct the person, body of the person to be examined by a registered medical doctor immediately, if the complaint, if the complainant is a female, the examination shall be made by female registered medical doctor. The registered medical doctor examining the person shall prepare a report within 24 hours on injuries, wounds, or marks of violence upon the person, mentioning the approximate time when such injuries or marks might have been inflicted. Where an examination is made under uh, this section, a copy of the report of the examination shall be furnished by the medical doctor to the person examined or to the person nominated by the person examined and also to the court. If the medical doctor is of the opinion that the person examined requiring medical treatment, the court shall direct the person to be admitted in a hospital. Court may direct registration of cases after recording of the statement as mentioned in section four, the court shall immediately forward a copy of the statement to the superintendent of police in cases where necessary to a superior police officer under his direction with the direction to register a case. The superintendent of police or the police officer who receives such an order immediately after such order is received shall investigate the matter and file a report to the court with or without a charge. Provided that if the agreed person thinks that proper investigation is not possible by the police, in such context, if that person appeals to the court and if the court is satisfied that the appeal of the agreed person is appropriate 
In that context, the court shall order a judicial investigation. The investigation officer, where appropriate, the judicial investigation officer, while filing the report, shall inform to the person whose statement was recorded under uh, the previous section, including the date about the filing of the report with the court. A person receiving a notice under section so and so may file objections personally or through a lawyer to the report to the report to the court within 30 days from the date of receipt of the notice. The court shall direct a police officer not below the rank of, uh, of the alleged perpetrator to investigate the case of the particular crime. Uh, then acquisitions by the par third parties also, uh, you know, there is provision for acquisition by third parties. Then other modes of complaints, you see, uh, any person who wishes to file a complaint of torture despite not being an aggrieved person, either concerning him or herself or, a, or concerning a third person, may do so to a court of sessions judge or to a police officer not below the rank of the superintendent of police. Upon receipt of such complaint, the superintendent of police or any officer superior to his rank shall immediately register a case, record the statement of the complainant, serve a copy of the complaint to the complainant specifying the case number and what action can be taken under the complaint. A superintendent of police or any officer superior to his rank receiving and taking action upon a complaint as provided above in section two shall furnish a report to the court of session judge within 24 hours from the time of receipt of such complaint. And then of course we have the investigation of complaint the investigation must be conducted within 90 working days and date of record from the date of recording of the first complaint and this time is stipulated by the court co code of criminal procedure may be extended by another 30 days with mutual consent of course application of code of criminal procedure unless anything is laid down to the contrary the provisions of the code of criminal procedure 1898 act 5 of 1898 shall be applicable for registering complaints, investigation, trial, and discharging the crimes under this act. Cognizance of offense. All punishable crimes under this act shall be cognizable, non-compoundable, and non bailable As per the provision under section three, no person who has been the mastermind or directly involved in commission of a crime under this act shall be released on bail. If the complainant party is deprived of the opportunity of participating in that hearing on the petition for bail and, and the court becomes satisfied that, the, that there are reasonable grounds that the alleged perpetrators can be convicted for allegations brought against him. If the, if the aforementioned person is a woman or physically retarded person may be considered for bail. Any person accused under this act is considered by, uh, is considered by the court with satisfaction that releasing him or her shall be justifiable. Then the court shall record the reasonable grounds for such a decision and may release the accused on bail. Protection. A complaint can file petition to the court of session judge against any accused under this act for protection. And shall be made, and the state and the person against whom such a protection is sought for shall be made parties to such petition. The court receiving the petition and after giving seven days notice to the respondents shall pass an order on the petition within 14 days. The court while disposing of such a petition as mentioned in subsection so and so shall make such orders as deemed necessary including but not limited to the detention of the person for periods of at least seven days, which may be extended as required from time to time. The court may also direct the officer investigating the offense punishable under this act to take such measures as directed by the court to ensure the compliance of the court's order. The court may also make appropriate orders as required to safeguard the persons who petitions to the court seeking protection or, or to be relocated, provided security, or pass other prohibitory orders against the respondent, like limiting the respondent's entry into a particular territory. Offenses. 
uh, if any person, uh, any person tortures another person, then that act shall be considered as an offense committed by that person. Any person, any person, any offense mentioned under Section 1 covers attempts to commit torture, a, a, assist or provoke or conspires in committing torture. Then it shall be considered that the person has committed an offense under this act. An offender who commits an offense under this act shall be personally liable for the crimes committed. Trial. A trial must be completed within 180 days since the registration of a complaint. Punishment. Any person who is found guilty under Section 1 of so and so shall be punished with a minimum of five years rigorous imprisonment or a monetary penalty of minimum 50,000 taka or both. And in addition to that, to that another compensation amounting 25,000 taka to be paid to the victim or aggrieved person or persons. If any person inflicts torture or any other person or that person dies as a result of such torture, then the perpetrator shall be considered as having committed an offense under Section 1 of Section 13 of this Act and shall be punished with rigorous imprisonment of minimum life term or a monetary penalty of minimum 100,000 taka or both for that crime. And in addition to that, another compensation amounting to a minimum of 200,000 taka must be paid to the victim or aggrieved persons. Any person found guilty under this section, the, this act shall be punished with minimum two years rigorous imprisonment or a monetary penalty of minimum 20,000 taka or both. An appeal, the appeal shall be only entertained only after the offender or the, or the um, convicted person has paid the penalty within 14 days of the passage of the verdict. Individual obligation and burden of proof. In case of any harm caused to a complainant on account of negligence or carelessness by a public officer or a person acting on behalf of a public officer, then the accused shall be personally liable to prove that the said harm has not been caused due to negligence or carelessness by him or her or the person acting on his or her behalf. So you can see that uh, we have been uh, successful in enacting uh, a very comprehensive law uh, criminalizing torture. And uh, while it was a bit lengthy, but I thought it should be very interesting for you gentlemen to know what has happened in Bangladesh. And I think that this is a very historical success that we have achieved in the premises of uh, criminalizing torture. <coughs> while we all rejoice on the enactment of Act Number 50 of 2013, we do recognize the challenges ahead in its implementation. Obstructions to the elimination of torture, major problem lies within the criminal justice system, which is primitive and backward in Bangladesh. Worse methods of torture and ill treatments in dealing with the accused persons have been have tacit approvals of the judicial system. Bangladesh has not yet invested in modern systems of investigation into crime. Re reliance on torture and ill treatments is considered to be convenient and inexpensive for collecting information. This is an irrational approach to criminal investigations. In Bangladesh, now we should focus on overall policy problems relating to the criminal justice. We must also consider making appropriate budgetary allocations to make the criminal justice system more rational and efficient. Yeah. The other day, Mr. Fernandez was, he raised a few questions like, are you afraid of better policing? In case of Bangladesh, perhaps answer is no. Then why do we have such a poor policing system? In Bangladesh, police has a reputation for being linked to crime, corruption, and are susceptible to be abused by political governments. Police Act of 1861 
still holds valid. Years of neglect of the policing system is the prime cause of degeneration of policing in Bangladesh. But it is time for us to make honest initiative for police reform to modernize our policing system free from corruption and political influence. Policing system must be made citizen friendly, thus removing the age old image of police as tormentors, which is a colonial legacy. We must eliminate the distrust in police and other law enforcement agencies. Another challenge is investigation, how to carry out an impartial inquiry into torture. Our new law, I have just read out, Act Number 50 of 2013, prescribes the provisions for investigation. Let us hope for its effective implementation. We must ensure credible, uh, credible independent investigations into cases of torture. In fact, creation of special unit of police for investigation in criminal offenses is under active consideration at the competent quarters of the present government. Our new law provides for protection for the victims, their families, human rights defenders, lawyers, and other human rights activists. Also, the law provides for protection for witness and victims' welfare. In short, this law is quite comprehensive with respect to various aspects of its implementation. In Bangladesh, judicial education on basic human rights and modern jurisprudence should be imparted to the judges to bring about qualitative improvements in their judgments. Registers to the law, which has been again raised uh, yesterday and today. I am not sure if we have enacted law number 50 of 2013 criminalizing torture with due consultations with law enforcement, law enforcement agencies like police, intelligence services, and their associates. But I have my apprehension that such law may be resisted if due police will, if due political will by the government is not effectively manifested. Political leaders always tend to search for excuses to allow police to torture persons on the so-called common rationale of national security to achieve their ulterior motive of silencing or eliminating political adversaries. Bangladesh is no exception. This must be discouraged forthwith. Lastly, can the political system survive without leaving room for corruption? Mr. Fernandez raised this question yesterday. I think for Bangladesh, yes. But then we all politicians, irrespective of our political belief, ideology, must rise to the occasion and accept this as the biggest challenge to build a happy, prosperous Bangladesh. Thank you all, gentlemen. Now I'm ready for questions.